My name is Paula Casera. My business is, um, hmm, it's kind of got a lot of pieces to it, but ultimately I'm a farmer. I'm a sheep farmer here in uh, New Paltz, New York. A long story. So how I got into it was um, just I'm an artist and uh, we came up here many 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 years ago my kid my first kid was just a year so that's already over 20 some odd years ago and we bought property an old farm at that point and eventually we were able to build a house and I really felt very strongly about it not being um, you know, the, the pasture land, it was an old farm, but the pasture land shouldn't be like a big front yard. I, I just was so adamant about that and I was happy to give up my old business which was mural painting. I'd been doing that for a very, very long time and was tired of traveling. And I started studying permaculture and started thinking about, well, what could this farm be? And one thing leads to another and then, you know, for some reason I just hit on sheep and I decided I'm going to raise sheep, and that was kind of it. And I did some research into the, and I've always been a knitter. I've always been a handwork person. And um, I don't know. I started with four sheep. Now I have like 68. You know, that's 68. sort of the way it happens. And that was about, I don't know, almost 10 years ago. What I felt was really important was that it should also be a learning place for other people, not just for me. So I opened up a shop, so I have a full knit shop where we teach and I hand dye all the yarn that we make and, you know, it's like a center for people who are interested in the fiber arts. We're kind of fortunate in a way that we can do stuff that other, like, typical yarn shops can't. So we have a big barn and in that barn I can teach everything from, you know, dyeing with natural dyes, which is plant dyeing to felting, we can do wet and messy things as well as teach like sock knitting. My mission really is to uh, be an educational source, you know, get people back to their, to the land, you know, promote sustainability, get people back into making things. So many people find so much comfort and real happiness in making things and um, working with their hands and, uh, you know, support local fiber, which is, you know, it's getting a little bit of traction, you know, people really do travel from on a destination, you know, they'll come, they want to see. People really care about uh, what they eat these days, they're caring more about like where their clothing comes from, you know, the types of materials they're working with, they, they like to know, you know, because clearly we don't need to knit our own socks. It's just fun and it makes it even like more fun if you know you can look out and see the sheep that the wool came from. You know. It's kind of seasonal the whole thing so we start out let's just say the season ends when we shear. Yeah I would say that. That's like our harvest so that happens at the end of February early March and I hire a terrific guy who comes from western uh, Western Massachusetts and he comes here and he'll shear all the animals in one day and I have like a festival of sorts as much as you can have in that kind of weather and people come and hang out and we drink hot drinks and we sweep and we you know kind of get the animals into the pen where they're being sheared and you know we sort through the wool we pat you know we bag it and then I take it to the mill and the mill I work with is up in uh, Greenwich, New York. It's called Bat and Kill Fiber, and um, it's a small woman-owned business. Uh, it's pretty cool. They're really great to work with. And we design the yarn, meaning like, is it going to be yarn uh, for socks? Is it going to be yarn to make a, like a little t-shirt? Is it going to be big and thick and bulky? Like, what am I going to make with it this year? Or how many different kinds of things? 
and then they proceed to make it and then a few months later it does take a while you know because there's the cleaning process there's the grading process there it's it's very labor intensive so I mean what I'd like to tell people out in the world when they just pick up a garment or especially pick up something woolen um, like somebody this wasn't machine made you know somebody even in the most like like ubiquitous of places like a Banana Republic or a J. Crew or one of those types of places, somebody had to shear that sheep. You know, there was like real hands on before that stuff went into the, the land of machinery. And that's always super fascinating to me. It's not like, you know, cotton, it's not like anything. They're animals. They're, you can't just put them into a machine and they pop out clean. You know, it really has to be hand on and hand washed and hand everything. And anyway, so it takes a while for it to come back. We get it back, and then I decide what I'm gonna, um, how I'm gonna dye things for that season. So I kind of think of it in terms of like it's a vintage, like you know, this is this year's vintage. You know, I don't make the same colors every single year. It's not interesting to me, you know. So um, and I pay attention to what people are seeming to want. You know, if nobody wants like bright screaming orange even though I think it's really cool I might not make very much of it you know because uh, I want to sell it because by selling the yarn I support this endeavor you know it's not a, you know fiber farming I wouldn't say is a modern money-making endeavor it's more a labor of artistic labor and a labor of love. but it does support itself and uh, which is cool Anyway, so we get the yarn back, I dye it, and then I start to market it. It goes in my shop, which people definitely come to see what I've got. You know, we work with designers, they'll write patterns for specific yarns, I'll write patterns. You know, there's different um, website uh, places you can go, and, and it's just like there's a place called Ravelry, which is just the sort of the black hole of everything fiber and people connect there from all over the world and share patterns and all that sort of stuff so you can market your stuff there you can market your stuff like you know Facebook Instagram you know I take all those sort of like you know not you know very niche market kind of routes to get the word out and people come people love it so far so good Knock on wood.